hard data on what is happening in the real economy is recorded with long lags. So that makes it really difficult to get a clear understanding of how big the impact of coronavirus shock has really been. Uh, both the IMF and the Office of Body Responsibility have released estimates and scenarios this week that suggest that the short run impact is going to be really large. Maybe real GDP is going to be falling by 35% and unemployment rising by about 2 million people in the second quarter of 2020. Now, clearly, these guesstimates or estimates hide a lot of different experiences for different people depending on their profession, age, and age, and so on. Uh, my name is uh, Tolke Eid, and I'm here with uh, Christopher Rao, who is a colleague in the Faculty of Economics and a fellow at Trinity College at the University of Cambridge, to talk about some of his new research on the inequalities of the coronavirus shock. Welcome, Chris. Thank you very much for uh, having me here. Wonder if you could start by, by telling me something about why, why you uh, decided to start this research project. Why did you start thinking about collecting data on this? So together with my co-authors, Abby adams Prassel, Teodora Boneva, and Marta Golin, we were worried exactly about that. There seemed to be no data out there. And then we got together, we designed a survey, programmed it, obtained an ethics approval, raised some funds, and hired a professional survey agency to contact their online sample. And then one can ask the survey agency to fill certain quotas so that it's representative. So all our surveys are geographically representative. We decided to go down this route and to collect this data ourselves exactly because of this long lag in official and government data. Moreover, we thought that this is a crisis like one we've never seen before. So there must be questions that are specific to this situation and not in usual surveys. So that's why we designed and implemented these questions so that we can inform policymakers and researchers about the current developments. What can we learn from the, from the survey that you, about the shock itself and its size? So first of all, the shock is huge. So we find that in the UK, about 15% of workers that were employed four weeks ago now are without employment due to the coronavirus. So to put this into perspective, usually about two to 3% of workers quit or lose their job from one month to the next. Now, moreover, about one in four workers has been furloughed. So basically within a month, almost half as many people are working as were working before. Now, to understand the magnitude of this recession that is looming, one has to think about past recessions. So usually, the rise in the unemployment rate during a recession is driven by lower job finding rates. Usually, mass layoffs are not part of the problem, at least not the major problem. Now, we have unprecedented mass layoffs. And the job finding rate, so people finding jobs, is probably also very low. So there might be some increases in delivery or supermarket jobs, but I expect these to be a drop in the ocean. Interesting. What can we learn about the mitigation policies that the government has put in place to reduce the impact of the lockdown policy itself from the survey? One definitely can see in the survey that they're needed. About a third of our respondents already had problems covering their usual bills, and many more expect to experience these problems in the near future. Now, one in three of our respondents that haven't lost their job yet are expecting to lose it in the future. We also see a large drop in work and income for the self-employed, and they're not supposed to receive money from the government until June. Now, this is a long time for people to go without income who are prohibited from exercising their profession. Now, the shock is affecting all of us in one way or the other, but, but clearly not in the, in the same way. Uh, now, the survey was designed to, to look at the inequalities of the impacts. So what, what can it then tell us about the, uh, the heterogeneity in the impacts? Who are the most exposed people here? So, Everyone is affected, but as you said, not in the same way. 
we find that the best predictor of losing your job or losing income is whether you can do tasks at home. So those people that can do a large share of their tasks from home, they've faring fairly well and they've already switched to working from home. So the first thing firms started doing is shed workers that were easy to fire at low costs. So this meant temporary workers or those on zero hour contracts. Hmm. These type of work arrangements also tend to be clustered in occupations such as food preparation or personal services. Okay, so jobs with face-to-face -face contact where obviously demand now fell a lot. So in these occupations where you cannot work from home, contracts are not safe, this is where we saw lots of job losses already. So, so far I've told you about the job characteristics that predicts job losses, but you might be wondering who was holding these jobs? Well, it's mostly young and less educated workers. But what is different from usual recessions is that we also find that women have been more likely to lose their jobs. Mm. Well, that's a surprising finding. Do you have any conjectures as to why that might be? So <clears throat> I think two things might play a role here. One is in usual recessions, it's manufacturing that is hit uh, hard and, and first, whereas here services can take place and face to face. Another thing is what might play a role. We looked at some time use data and we find that amongst people that are working from home for their job, women also are spending more time on childcare and on homeschool. So if firms were factoring this in, maybe they considered laying off women first. Hmm. Now, all these things are sort of short-term effects. Uh, the office of budget responsibility assumed in their scenario this, this week that there would be a quick rebound, that we would be back uh, where we started relatively quickly. Does your research tell us anything about how likely that assumption is? We don't have a crystal ball, but that's why we asked our survey respondents to make this prediction. And if we trust their expectations, then there's not going to be a quick rebound. So mm. the average expected probability of some form of social distancing measures still being in place in August is about 50%. And as I mentioned before, about one in third of those that still have a job are afraid that they're going to lose it. Okay, so now even if these expectations were too pessimistic, well, I don't believe in a rapid rebound. Why? Well, hiring, so the matching between firms and workers takes time. And consumers are going to be apprehensive. So I think both supply and demand are going to be sluggish. I know that you conducted a similar survey for the United States. Uh, could you tell us something about what the differences and similarities are between the U.S. and the U.K. in regard to the uh, to the effects of the of the shock? So we see that in the U.S., workers were fired at a higher pace. Um, we see that uh, already in our first survey wave, more people had been laid off, and this continued into the our second survey wave. And I personally believe this is because of the lower firing costs in the U.S. Hmm. Now, a permanent contract in the U.S. doesn't mean the same thing as in the U.K. And given that we find that in the U.K. a permanent contract is quite important for you to have kept your job, well, that can explain one reason why people will faster be laid off in the U.S. Now, <clears throat> at the same time, a lower firing cost also decreases your hiring cost. So we might see a difference then in the rebound there. So even though the U.S., in the U.S. workers now have been hit harder, it seems, we might see that it picks up faster now. In terms of uh, future research on this topic, are, are you planning to expand the surveys you are doing across uh, both across time and also across space? Yes, we are. So there are many questions that we still want to look at and also everything is changing so rapidly that uh, we want to survey people over the months to come and also into the recovery. Things that we still want to understand are how people's preferences for certain job characteristics, such as job security or being able to work from home, how are they going to change over time? We also want to contribute to the understanding of the cover recovery once we finally enter that phase. 
and we want to expand geographically. So we've already collected some data for Germany and uh, we would like to continue to do so. Given that this is ongoing work, all comments and also funding are very welcome. Thank you very much for this, Chris. That was fascinating to hear about this uh, very important research project of yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doke. Okay.